The practice of talking conversion therapies could soon become a criminal offence under new government proposals. The Foreign and Equalities Minister, Liz Truss, says this proposed offence will be part of a raft of measures to ban the coercive practice within months. Yeah, these proposals will protect LGBTQ plus people, including children, uh, the Government Inequalities Office has said it will explore ways to prevent the promotion of conversion therapies and fund a support service for victims. Critics of the proposal say that all conversion therapies should be banned rather than just talking therapies. Well, let's find out more. Jane Azan joins us now. She's a gay evangelical Christian and also chair of the Ban Conversion Therapy Coalition. Uh, Jane, for you, how do you feel that finally it looks like there might be some action? Well, I'm obviously thrilled that at last, after years of campaigning and waiting, we've seen uh, the government's proposals towards the ban. And there's much that's good in uh, their proposals. There are protection orders. There are, there's support for victims. But sadly, there's a major loophole, which will mean that this still impacts the lives of thousands, if not millions of people because they're allowing for consent. They're allowing for adults uh, to, to say they want to go through this. And that we know that particularly in religious settings, many people like myself consent to go through it. We have no choice but to consent uh, because we believe we're doing the right thing. And yet the consequences are so dire and the level of attempted suicide and even sadly completed suicide is, is as we know, horrifically high. So I, I'm really very concerned about these uh, proposals and I'm glad that in a sense the government is consulting because I hope many people will feed back uh, that this is not yet the ban that we need. Uh, can you just explain for us, Jane, what these talking therapies are? I don't know if you've experienced it yourself. How does it actually happen? What kind of questions are you asked? What kind of conversations do you have? Well, the fact that the government is even calling it talking therapies is part of the problem because they're thinking about talking therapy in a clinical setting. But the sort of conversion therapy I went through and which the government's own uh, uh, research shows the majority of us go through is in a religious setting where we're prayed for, where the concept of being gay or transgender is seen as an abhorrent sin and that there must be something that you've done in your past or perhaps uh, a relationship you've had with your parents or someone close to you that has gone wrong. And that is why you're gay, i.e. there's something that uh, needs healing in you. So people will pray over the years um, for relationships of your, with your parents, with uh, perhaps sexual trauma you've been through. And when that doesn't work, you'll go through exorcisms and spiritual deliverance. But it's always left on the victim at, or, or the survivor to feel that it's their fault, that they are the problem, that they don't have enough faith, that they aren't being open and honest enough. And now we're putting the added burden of telling them that they are the ones who consented to this horrific abuse. And that's why the government needs to step in, as it's done in so many other cases like female genital mutilation, and forced marriage, and protect people by ensuring that they don't have get out clauses such as consent. The Church of England have said these practices have, quote, no place in the modern world. The reality is, and you, you sort of just touched on it there, is that often this is really steeped in religion and faith. How difficult is it to try and separate the two? Well, you're absolutely right. There is a, a strong link uh, between religion, faith and indeed cultural norms. And that's why the Church of England, uh, in a debate that I led, called on the government to ban it. It's why the Methodist Church have called on the government to ban it, and the Hindu Council and the Buddhist Council, and the Quakers, there's an increasing number of religious groups now that know that this is the dark side of religion and that spiritual abuse, sadly, occurs. And that's why we need protections and law. And I think the government needs to understand and listen more to survivors in a religious context. The whole proposal they've put forward shows that they're just thinking about a medical context, that they haven't really taken on board the concerns in a religious context. And that's why um, we're speaking out now and why we know that many people who will be watching this programme will understand the harm that they too have been through 
and uh, why we need protections. Some other people who say they, they want protection are mental health professionals who have voiced some concerns to say, what if they have conversations with young people who are maybe really struggling with their gender identity? How can they have those conversations in a way that's safe and not going to break the law if a law like this comes into place? Well, I think the law is very clear um, and the proposals are clear that what we need are safe spaces where people can explore uh, their sexual or, um, orientation or gender identity, where they are free to come to a, a point of peace about who they are and that the therapist or the religious leader can help them come to that point of peace. But the important thing is that there should be no predetermined outcome. I've been involved with a group of very senior human rights lawyers chaired by Baroness Kennedy, who've come together to advise the government on how to ban uh, conversion therapies. And they're adamant that uh, religious um, freedoms at times need restricting and that indeed consent cannot be a, a case for defence, that we have to ensure that um, we protect the vulnerable and put them first. And that's what a therapist would want to do too. So I don't know why they're, they're um, saying that they're concerned. It's very clear that good therapy always puts the, vic uh, the survivor at the heart of the conversation. Jane, just, just explain for us how your journey, because you, you said that you were subjected to some of this, um, these talking therapies. You're still a Christian. How have you managed to kind of to, to square that in your head? And what did you say? What was your way out of that, away from that? Well, you're right. It was a horrendously long and painful journey for me over 10 years of conversion therapy, trying to pray the gay away, as people say. Um, and sadly, my body coming to a point of, of, of just packing up. I ended up in hospital twice with uh, my body cracking under stress and, and full blown breakdowns and taking to me to a very, very dark place where I felt perhaps the only way forward was to take my life. Luckily, I didn't do that. And uh, it, it did put my faith under an awful lot of strain and stress. But actually, when I embraced the truth about who I am, I found God um, engaging with me as God has always done. And my faith has grown stronger because I truly now understand the concept of God being a God of love and wanting to celebrate love wherever and with whoever that is found.